who wishes us well and everything that we're doing here well today. Greetings also from Ileife, where my mother comes from, the royal family of Ileife. And greetings from the good people of Nigeria, especially the slightly younger generation. I greet you all. I consider myself a son of Asaba because I have been coming here since I was about 14 years old. Initially through my very good friend and brother, Chike Ogya, who we virtually grew up together. He taught me bad things and I taught him good things. <laughs> and today he's a member of my church. We are both born again. But he taught me very bad things. But I forgive him. Also, I have very, very close friends in Asaba. And I came here today with one of them, my brother, Robert Odiaji, who is also my partner in my accounting firm of SIO. He's the chairman, I'm the managing partner. Also, Kenneth Udogu is a good friend of mine. And also, our beloved Chuck, who has put these events together. I'd like you to put your hands together for Chuck. He has taken a great chart, and he has done a lot of work. Chuck would not let me rest. He kept on sending me materials, kept on insisting I must write something, and kept on saying that I must come here today and be part of this occasion. Chuck, I thank you for leading the charge for our generation at this time in Nigeria. Not that I have a close relationship with the Edozia family. Your late brother, Professor Emmanuel, was my neighbor in Ikoyi, where we live. Ngozi, I believe, I know very well. It's actually Louis, your son, that's one of my closest friends, and I used to be his auditor. And he owes me fees, so I'll collect the fees before I go. <laughs> And of course, the other Edusians, I know them quite well. So I feel very much at home here in Asaba. And I feel a deep connection to this particular place. And I want to thank Chuck for the great work he's doing. And also extend my commiserations to the good people of this great land for what happened nearly 54 years ago on the 7th of October, 1967. I dare say that my family and I were also a little bit affected by that war because my father was the chief accountant of MNDC in Benin. And for about two and a half, three years, we were separated from my father as we lived in Ibadan with my mother who was in the civil service in Ibadan. It is a painful tragedy of Nigeria that first of all the civil war should have happened. Secondly, that a tragedy like this gruesome killing in this place could have happened. And my prayer is that the blood of all those who lost their lives on this land will speak favorably for the rest of Nigeria in the future in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My prayer is that God will give comfort to this great land, comfort to the women, especially who lost their beloved ones and all the families, and comfort to Nigeria. Our sister, when she spoke, was saying that a lot of the women, just as a joke, did not have husbands for a long time. That's because Chike was too young. Otherwise, they have married all of them. <laughs> but seriously, we have a major problem in Nigeria. We have a deep problem in Nigeria. And we have a serious problem in Nigeria. And I do hope and pray that what we're doing here will be one of the healing stones of this nation. We need to look at the foundation and the reason why we have these problems in Nigeria. 
The first one is the basis and the foundation of this country. The colonial masters who put us together, one way or the other, and who designed Nigeria to fail. But I want to tell them that Nigeria will not fail. And Asaba will not fail. And they will be put to shame. But what baffles me the most is that even if they design Nigeria to fail, why are we Nigerians accepting Nigeria to fail? Why was this gruesome murder in the first place? It was because they designed us to quarrel, they designed us to fight one another, they designed us not to have any peace, and we are following the scripts of their design. It is time for Nigerians to wake up and smell the coffee. If we had had good leadership, if we had had great leadership, if we had had outstanding leadership, this thing would never have happened. And by now, by now, Nigeria will be a first world country. But whether they like it or not, we will get there in Jesus' name. My prayer is that the people of Asaba will have the goodness and the kindness in their heart to forgive the rest of this nation, especially those who drove this act. And I do believe that this will be a healing process, a restoration process, and a growth process, and a process of blessing for this entire region. My prayer is that the rest of Nigeria will hear what is going on here, and will have the appropriate reaction to what we are doing and ensure that this sort of thing will never, never, never happen again in this nation. My prayer is that Asaba will lead the past head for the unity and the driving, first of all, of the South-South. If the South-South could unite and come together and lend a strong voice to this entity called Nigeria, things will begin to change. So I'd like to see leadership coming forth from here with strength, with direction, with focus because of the amount of intelligence, education, enlightenment, and exposure that the Asaba people are recruited for. We like to see us bringing the best of the best of Nigeria to the fore. I don't care where the leader comes from, as long as he's visionary, as long as he's capable, as long as he's competent, as long as he's focused, and as long as he loves every single Nigerian, regardless of tribe, religion, background, race, or entity, Nigeria will be great again. I want to assure you of my full support of whatever we're doing here. The donation of my company, the donation of my family, and the donation of the church that I represent towards this great cause. I want to assure you that by God's grace, all will be well. And whether they like it or not, Nigeria will be great again. I didn't hear your amen. I said Nigeria will be great again. I didn't hear your amen. I said Nigeria will be great again. God bless you all. And God bless you. People think we've done this before. No, this has never been done before. Yes, there have been situations where, for if in one way or the other, the day is remembered. But this is the first time. Abito has decided to take frontally the issues of the 7th of October 1967, where over a thousand young men and able-bodied older men were killed in full blood in what is now known as the Asaba Massacre. It was such a horrendous act that I think government after government have been so ashamed of us that they cannot even acknowledge that that has happened, talk less of even extending an apology to this country. Okay. But they, you, you see the names, they are real people. Every family in this community lost a loved one to this program. And what you are saying, just like coming into your question, we said that today, we will take on the process of the 